Welcome to the last video of the CSS part in our beginner's guide. In this short video, we'll have a look at the website we created once again and see what we have to adjust. For example, this contact page right here. I think this looks kind of wrong right now. And we'll have a look at pseudo classes. So let's directly start right here with that contact page. We see that home works fine, but contact, well, we didn't apply our style so far to this part of our website. So let's go back to the code and let's simply have a look at the contact or the index.html file in the contact folder, because this is the old file that we created in the beginning of the series. And in the meanwhile, well, we changed a lot. For example, we added this viewport meta tag right here. So let's also add it right there to this file. Let's also see what else we have, our fonts that we of course have to add right here. So let's also copy that to our second index.html file right here. And now we can actually simply copy the content right here. So I'm starting in the header until the nav because the plan is actually to just have the home and contact. So this navigation part on this contact page will work on the contact page later when we work with JavaScript throughout the series. But for now with CSS, we'll just keep it like that. So I selected that and I will now simply paste it right here into the body. So let's get rid of that initial content, paste it. And now important, we need to change it right here because the link right here should now be for home because we want to be navigated to home right here. This should only be a list item where it says contact because if we click onto that, nothing should happen because we are already on the contact page then. And important, we need to change the hyper reference right here to dot dot index HTML like this because we want to navigate from the contact folder into our main index HTML file. With that, let's save that and I think it should be fine. So let's go back and reload the page. Yeah. And with that, as you can see, it looks different right here because I zoomed in a little bit. Let's do it the same way right here. Yeah. I think now you can see the home and the contact page have the same general styling. As I said, more content to come on this contact page in the next videos when we talk about JavaScript. And with that, I'm now actually quite happy with the look of our website. If we go to home, we can see that the text looks fine. I thought in the last video that we might have to change the font size of specific elements, but actually it looks totally fine. It also switches to the mobile view because of the media queries we added in the last video. And if we have a look at a mobile phone, let's maybe increase that a little bit like that. So the iPhone X, it looks fine in the portrait mode. And if we rotate our device, it also looks good in the landscape mode. If we use a smaller device, an iPhone 7, for example, we can see that in both modes, the, well, mobile view is displayed. So this looks quite good, actually. And because of that, there is only one less thing that I would like to show you or that I would like to add. And these are pseudo classes. Pseudo classes simply allow us to show a specific state of an element. This means we can add such a pseudo class to a selector. And if the pseudo class is added, we can define what happens to an element. For example, if we hover the mouse over an image or if we click onto contact or home. And that's exactly what I would like to do. I would like to change the way our website is displayed in a way that if we hover over this or that image or over Max or my head, that the mouse cursor becomes a pointer. And if we click onto contact right here or home right there, I would like to change the color of contact or home once we click onto it. So these are two things that we can do with pseudo classes. More information about pseudo classes, as always, can be found in the MDN. And also, as always, you can find a link to the corresponding site on the MDN in the video description. So let's start with the pseudo class that turns the mouse cursor into a pointer once we hover over an image. So let's go back to our code to the CSS file and let's add it maybe up here as kind of a general rule. So you write the selector, in our case, the images. Now a colon, and now you write 
hover. That's one of the pseudo selectors available. And now you write the curly braces as always. And now we simply say that if we hover over an image, then we want the cursor to be a pointer or to turn into a pointer. This can of course be difficult on mobile devices. So this is rather a pseudo selector you probably use if you want to have it on a desktop or on a normal computer screen. For mobile devices, probably not the best option. Nevertheless, I would like to show you how it works. So let's save this and let's reload the page. And if we now hover over the image, you can see that the mouse turns into a pointer right here right there. And if we go over max image and over my image. So this was the first pseudo class that I wanted to show you. And the second one is the class that allows us to change the color once we click onto an element. Specifically, I would like to be able to change the color once we click these and these are links. So let's go back and let's also add a pseudo class for links. So for the anchor tag right here. And this time it's not hover, but it's active because we click onto it, so it's active. So let's do that. And let's now change the color to our normal, you know that already, FA923F, so our Academind orange basically. And if we now save that and go back to the page and reload it, you can see that nothing changed. But if we now click onto contact, can you see it? Or onto home? it becomes orange for the amount of time where it's active. So basically, whenever I click it. So if I hold the left mouse button, you can see it stays orange. If I release the left mouse button, then it gets back to its initial color, the black right here. Well, and with that, we did it actually. We finished the CSS part of our beginner's guide. I think this was a lot of work and I'm totally aware of the fact that this is not the most complicated website probably. But if we think back about what we applied so far, we used a lot of important concepts of CSS in this rather simple website. The thing that's missing right here, of course, is logic. And if we need logic on our website, then it's time for JavaScript. So in the next video of the series, we will finally have a look at JavaScript. Of course, I hope to also see you in this video. I hope that you enjoyed the CSS part so far. And as always, I can only say thanks a lot for watching, hope to see you in the next videos and bye.